Hi guys, I'm here with Miss Bowman and we're going to talk about um, kindergarten and first grade because Miss Bowman got to have them for two years, which he was super excited about. And I think he would have followed her all the way to high school if he could have. Anyway, um, so uh, what is your first memory of Drew? Okay, my first memory of Drew was when he was still in preschool. He would come visit my kindergarten classroom and he was terrified of the potty and the flushing of the potty. And so they would bring him in every single day and walk into the bathroom, flush the potty, and he would scream and we'd go out. But we did it every single day to try to get him used to the potty. So that was my very first first impression of Drew, first meeting ever. I bet you were thinking, what I was a little am scared. I getting? I was a little scared. I won't, I won't, yes, I was. <laughs> I would have been. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was a little scared. That was his mom. Uh -huh. I was sending him. So, um, um, how old was Drew when you got him in kindergarten? He turned five. He just turned five. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What would you say was your biggest challenge with Drew? Okay, at the beginning of the year, we had a hard time finding an aid, and so there was about two weeks that I had him all on myself. And I quickly realized there was no way, no how, that I was gonna be able to meet his needs and my other 24 kids' needs. And so at the beginning, that was the biggest struggle. And then after we got an aid, but she was wonderful and she helped out a lot, it was just being prepared what was going to come next. You know, I didn't know Drew very well. We didn't have the relationship we do now, obviously. But after I got used to him and we got in the classroom, knowing quick, you know, real fast, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to be prepared what's going to set him off and then what I'm going to do. Being one step ahead every single day. And then also being ready that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Work, work, you know, the day before may not work the next day. And you just had to keep going. And right. that, that was hard. It was hard. Yeah. Um, and sometimes just not knowing what to do. Yes. And yeah. him sitting there just looking at you thinking, you're going to help me. And just, you're looking back at him going, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And then at that point, we usually he would just crawl up in my lap and I'm just holding until we could go on to the next thing. Um, in those first two weeks without, without the aid, just for trying to get uh, people who are listening or watching, what was it like without the aid? What were the things that Drew couldn't do in the classroom? Um, pretty much he could not, he could not function at all. It was, he had to be by me and pretty much he was just my shadow at that point because he was so scared and it was so much, just the anxiety of all the other kids because it's kindergarten and they're five and it's the beginning of school and none of them know what to do you know and drew especially didn't know what to do and so it, it was pure chaos and there was not any learning going on those two weeks because he just he just could not do it and i had no help and so pretty much he was my shadow and i was trying to avoid meltdowns more than getting him set up in a routine and, and we that's were, and we that's were. normal because uh, a lot of people, I think that's where, as from a parent's perspective, a lot of people suffer in that the school thinks because they didn't cry or didn't have a meltdown that it's considered a successful day. Right. And from my perspective, it was, I want him to actually learn. Yep. And mm -hmm. I believe it is the school's responsibility to provide whatever assets Definitely. are necessary to get there. And I loved because you backed me up. And yes. I couldn't have picked a better kindergarten teacher to start him with. And I mean that. Uh, we um, just, I, I can't say enough good things. If I talk too long about it, it'll make me cry. So I'm going to um, go to the next question. <laughs> um, sometimes... Um, Do you feel like, um, well, what was your happiest moment with Drew? I'll go to that. Okay, you probably don't want to ask me that one. That's really going to make you cry. <laughs> um, okay, it was first grade year. Um, it was in November, and I had had my miscarriage. And I had already told the class. They all knew. And I was 14 weeks along, and it was, it was horrific. It was bad. I did not come back to school until January. And when I came back, I didn't say anything to the students because I just, I just couldn't. They, they knew probably, but Drew really knew. He knew, and I tell everybody, you know, Drew was, he, I think he was in my first grade class, not for me, for him, for him, for me, because he knew something was wrong. And he would just crawl up in my lap and he would pretty much hold me. 
for those first few months and I was struggling. It was hard and he knew it and I didn't say a word to him. And I think that's why our bond is so close because I helped him, but he also helped me. They're a very, very hard situation. He's part of the family pretty much now. <laughs> oh, it's what he tells me <laughs> when I get on to him. I'll just go live with Bowman. Uh -huh. I mean, he still tells me that. And um, that's fine. I, I know it is. God put us in each other's lives <laughs> to help each other. And, you know, God already knew that's what was going to happen. And it was Drew. Didn't even have to say a word to him. And uh, his wow. love is just... He just, I'm telling you, he just crawl up and I just feel so much better. And yeah, I told you not to ask that question, <laughs> but that's my happiest moment with Drew and I will never forget it, I ever. Love it. <laughs> um, what's your saddest moment or your hardest where you just wish sometimes you didn't have to have them in your class, I guess? Well, my hardest moment was, like I said before, just not knowing what to do in cer certain situations, you know, and I saw that he was frustrated and I knew I could not get frustrated because it wasn't his fault. And I knew sometimes not being able to fix it either or not to be able to make it better. It, one of the biggest things was the fire drills. And at first I thought, you know what, I'm gonna tell him about it and tell him that we're gonna have it. Mm -mm, that was a bad mistake because he worried about it all day long. And so I said, okay, Miss Tracy, this is what we're gonna do. And I would just scoop him up and that fire drill went off and we'd walk out the door and he'd be screaming, hollering, and I'd just hold him and go out. We did that probably the whole year of kindergarten. It was just hard, but they're loud. Well, first grade, I'm like, you know what, Ben? I'm not gonna hold you this time. You're gonna walk, you're gonna hold my hand. And I just knew that it, it just caused him so much pain. He, he just could not stand it. But by the end of first grade, he was doing what all the other kids do and just holding their ears. And he'd walk out to the flagpole and we'd walk back in and he'd say, hold me wasn't so bad. I said, no, it wasn't, Drew. You did it. But it's those situations. You can see sometimes the end result, but sometimes you do. You just sit there not knowing. Yeah. You know, and I know you'll have that as parents. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's hard as a teacher because you want, you want to make it better. You want to fix it. And some days I just have to say, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what to do. Well, y'all made it look like you knew what you were doing all the time. So <laughs> that was good. I did not, you know, and then like with all the food allergies, you know, um, I broke the rules a few times <laughs> and he would always tell on me, but um, that's hard to see. It is difficult. It's very difficult. When everybody else is having a cupcake and he didn't get a cupcake. And so that's why I did it the one day. I just yes. gave him a little scoop of icing and I, I knew he was going to tell what I was like. I was keeping <laughs> it from y'all. But it, those are other hard things, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that... You know, it's just not fair. <laughs> that is a big one right now. Corn is the new allergy and corn is in literally everything. And I have really been struggling in the last week or two, like really struggling because I do not know how to teach him right. to live like this. And um, we're gonna work on a whole series of videos of how to cook his food because I, as a parent, it sounds so morbid, but I have to think about, for Drew, a hypersensitivity of what's coming next right. down the road. And so I know that he's going to have to live by himself at some point and cook for himself and shop for himself. And if I, God forbid, something happened early to me, how would he know what to even begin to do? And nobody knows. And right. so we're going to we're gonna do that next. <laughs> it's going to be our next series. Anyway, um... Would you say that Drew's changed her outlook on autism as a whole? Most definitely. Um, you know, like I said at the very beginning when he was walking in my classroom from preschool, you know, and they tell you that you're getting a child with autism. He was my first one I've ever had with autism. It is scary as a teacher because I, I hadn't had really any training on it or anything. But now I realize keep those expectations high and don't abandon them. You may have to stop and you may have to do it two days later, but don't abandon them and just keep on going. Just keep on going. I think that's what I've learned most from Drew. Um, if, uh, I guess after having your experiences with Drew, um, what would you say to the autism community as a whole? Like, what, would you, what message would you say? Um, I, like I said, don't be scared. Just treat them like normal, normal kids. Drew is the most fun-loving child. He understands sarcasm. You can joke with him. You can play with him. Um, don't 
don't ever be standoffish. Don't don't treat them different. I don't think Drew would ever want to be treated no. differently, ever, ever, ever. And um, just don't be scared. Just treat him like you would anybody else, and you'll quickly find out if that didn't work. Then just change it and go at it a different way. You know. <laughs> I love it because Drew has a way of like working his way into the hardest of hearts I think and so, yes. um, like even your shirt for those who don't realize why it says the Bowman <laughs> is because Drew just names people what he wants them to be called and nobody was their real names. Yeah. Tracy was Tracer, Tracer. Uh -huh. the Bowman and Miss Lane has always just been Lane. There's never anything in front and he's just um, he's really funny but I um we just thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And I personally um, cannot say enough of how much you did for us and how you changed our lives and uh, his. And there'll never be another one like you for us. And we've had some really great people come and go. But um, your time with him was special and we cherish it. And I uh, will forever love you for that. And I just uh, thank you so much. Thank you.